it's so wonderful if you keep studying, you keep immersing yourself in the Word of God, you keep studying the books that are of true wisdom, that every now and then you'll come up on a gem. And sometimes you'll be full of gems. But that's what's happened this morning. I've been coming up on one of my favorite passages, and I thought I'd share it with you. Uh, when we put these verses before us and meditate on them, it can really help assist in one's motivation, in one's knowledge. It can help a person to keep them on track and to actually help assist in reaching one's goals. So this one is 1 James 2 through 8. It says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Y'all, this is a gem. This is something that makes so much sense to anyone who has ever set a goal before them and has worked on it. You can truly accomplish wonderful things in this life if you understand this principle. And this is all about faith. This is about the testing of your faith also. Because it's not about just having this passing hope of faith. This is about being steadfast in the faith. And it talks about being tossed such as being in the sea from side to side. And if you're that person who is double-minded, who's going to be led by the wind, then don't expect that you will receive anything from the Lord. This is so, so good. Uh, this is not a verse I've been really meditating on lately, but it's so much in line with a lot of the videos that I've been making lately. And uh, you'll find that the more you're in line with the principles of God, the more you're in line with truth. And it just feels right. When you're in the truth, you feel it. You know it to be true. It's important to really set your goals before you and stay on them and believe in them and talk about them. Don't let them be just these passing thoughts that go unnoticed. You have to have faith in yourself. And without that faith, it's hard to accomplish goals. I'm going to read you also a verse from Habakkuk uh, 2, 2 through 2, 3. And this is about writing down your vision. And this really reinforces the point that if you write something down and you look at it every day, it will come true. It says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it plainly on clay tablets, so that the one who reads it will run. For the vision is yet for the appointed future time. It hurries toward the goal of fulfillment. It will not fail. Even though it delays, wait patiently for it, because it will certainly come. It will not delay. So right there, it's reinforcing having faith 
and your vision. And so, so important. I'm going to read it from a different translation just to have another perspective on it, just to have multiple insights into this. It says, And the Lord answered me, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. So it's talking about if you're breezing past it, and this is another reason I like to um, have things accessible either on the wall or in one's journal so I can see it regularly. For the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. So there's so much in this uh, short little passage here. I think it it gives us a lot of insight. And uh, this is interesting too. In Habakkuk 1, 1, 2 through 1, 4, it says, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you will not slave. save? Why do you make me see iniquity and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth for the wicked surround the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. So again, he's giving this complaint to the Lord. And this is uh, Habakkuk was a prophet. And this is interesting that, you know, he's he's bring this up to the Lord as a complaint, and this is what the Lord gives in response. And so this is very interesting because if you have a vision of something and you don't write it down and you don't take it seriously and you don't have faith behind it, you can't expect the Lord to make it happen. You have to get behind it. You have to reinforce it. You have to read it often. You have to believe in it. You have to have faith in it. There are so many people who maybe they pray once, and I've been this person, but the more you tap into the way it actually works, the better it gets. But to just do it in passing and never look at it again, that's not usually enough. Now, I'm not saying there aren't instances where one prayer is enough and one belief is enough. That is That can be the case. But if you're going after a big vision, then that needs to be reinforced. And there's something about the power of the subconscious mind that when your subconscious takes hold of your vision, it will make it happen. You will connect to the resources you need to actually see it through and take action towards the end and to making it into manifestation. So y'all, these are two, I think, of some of the best verses for creation. And we have more. Um, I've read Mark 11, 22 to 24. That's also a very good one. And there are even more beyond that. But these two lately... I think are really, really good. And if you meditate daily on verses like this, it's so powerful. Many of us get thrown by the wind because we're not definite in our purpose. And so ask yourself, have you discovered what your definite purpose is? Have you discovered the things that you truly value? And that's where it starts. What is your table of will values? What does that look like? What do you truly value? And you should put them in order. I think that can help. But at least, at the very least, write them down. What do you truly value in life? Because some people value other things. And people may assume that you're going after a certain thing. But your table of will values may be different from somebody else's. So if you're clear on what you're going after, this will affect your behavior. And it will also cause you to value your time more because you'll know that 
you're going after a certain thing. It's kind of like a rubber band that's being stretched and uh, it'll be tighter and tighter the more you know what you're going after. But if you don't know what you're going after, it's like a loose string because you don't really care how you use your time and it doesn't matter because you have no goals. You're like a rudderless ship. You're like a, a boat that has no sail and your boat is just going from side to side. And then years later, a person may be miserable because they think to themselves, well, I've wasted all this time. I haven't really accomplished anything. And what's the point? Uh, well, the point is, is to establish now your goals if you haven't already done it. And if you have done it, then reinforce these goals like it says in these two verses. This is super, super critical because if we don't do this, a person could be miserable. And, and I'll say especially for a man, I think women too, but especially for a man to have no goals, it's super bad. Because as a man, you are about direction. Your whole symbol is the arrow, the phallic arrow symbol. Uh, whereas a woman, is in, it's about reception. And she wants to receive that direction. And she also wants to enhance that direction. As a man, you must have a direction that you're going in. You must have a, a point at which you're trying to arrive at. And through doing that, you build up momentum. And people feel that momentum from you. But if you haven't established that end yet, Nobody's going to feel that pull. They're not going to feel that motivating force either. If you're leading a team and the team doesn't know what the goal is, they think it's just to go out and do their best. That's not really a goal. I mean, that's great. That may be a little bit motivating, but after a while that gets old, you need a goal. Uh, you can't just go out and train in martial arts every day without a goal. You need ultimately a goal. Is your goal to become a black belt or a red belt or an instructor or a world champion fighter? What's the ultimate goal? Do you want a certain level of competence or are you just going out to enjoy yourself? Now, some people do that and that's a particular goal. They're, they're doing it purely for health and they have health reasons. That's fine. But you need to know why you're doing something. There are a lot of rudderless ships out there of people who just, you don't feel any magnetism from them because they don't even know why they're doing a thing. They're doing it maybe just to try it out because they're bored, but that's not having a true goal. Having a true goal is really setting your sights on the end and reinforcing that end constantly until you get there. Now, while you're doing the thing, you may not be focused on it because you need all your resources focused on the present moment. But in the back of your mind, when you're in the morning or maybe at night, you need to look at this again. Look at your goals. Have you moved closer to your goals? Have you done anything today? Or maybe are you going to do something today to move yourself closer to these goals? And when you do that, and you do that on a consistent basis, you literally make progress towards these goals and you just feel so much better. You go to sleep at night thinking that day was a success and you feel like you're actually accomplishing something in life. It's the people who don't have faith or their faith has doubt in it that's when a person has problems. Now, let me just reinforce this again. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. Notice he says no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. So doubt is a major enemy. And it says... He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, this whole sentiment is also reflected 
in the book Outwitting the Devil, which I highly recommend to read at least one time through, maybe multiple times through, because the whole premise of the book is actually from this verse, from what I can tell. The main bent of it is that if you don't have a definite purpose, you will be a drifter. And it's really a person who has no idea what he's going after, he becomes a drifter. And he will be subject to someone else ultimately. And so y'all, I can't emphasize the importance of establishing your vision, your purpose, being definite about it, having definite thoughts, a definite vision. And it doesn't mean you can't change your goals along the way, but your purpose doesn't change much. Your, your goals may slightly change or they may not, but you got to have a vision. You got to have goals without this, you'll be miserable. And so y'all, this is, this is a motivational to get busy, discover what it is, write it down, reinforce it. This is all biblically based. I mean, this is all backed up by scripture. Don't let the world toss you around. Okay, y'all. I'm going to leave it there. Feel free to comment on this. I'll see you next time.